Okay, so getting back to the to the presentation here is uh, getting back on track. So what we need to do is is filter the SNP data. And so we had at the start 8,303 SNPs to start with on the Infinium uh, SNP array. And I have uh, colored in yellow here, shaded in yellow, the, the SNPs or the filtering process that is really um, general to anything we really do. We need to be able to remove the questionable and bad SNPs, ones that aren't anchored to the pseudomolecule, ones that map to more than two locations. That's kind of, kind of standard. And whether it's a diploid or tetraploid population. But uh, as I said earlier, there was only so many SNPs that, that, um, that we felt we could use from the custom five cluster calling, and that was a little over 5,000. So when we did this initial general filtering and then looked at the custom five, uh, five cluster calling, that filtered it down to 4,604. We've, we've uh, used 10% as a, as a cutoff for uh, no calls in the progeny. So if we have more than 19 proge uh, progeny where we did not get a call on a SNP, that was removed from the um, analysis. So that took out about 400 different SNPs. If um, the parents had a no call, we removed, removed those. That didn't remove uh, too many. And then we removed any ones where there really wasn't any segregation in the progeny. So that gave us actually 3,298 segregating SNPs in this premier russet by Rio Grande russet uh, mapping population. This table here is showing us the, the, diff, the frequency of the different um, uh, SNP combinations that we have um, in this population. So on the left-hand side, you can see the premier russet uh, genotypes. And on the top, we can see the Rio Grande genotypes. And then what we have is, is shaded in color, um, the nulliplex by simplex. And that adds up to 800. Uh, uh, markers that we can use. Now again, this is kind of interesting, is that the, the tetraploid map software has a maximum of 800 SNPs. And so again, we are not um, uh, manipulating things. We're, we're, we just have an interesting way the numbers are sorting out. Okay, so now uh, we can also use nulliplex by duplex in the mapping. And so there ends up being 371 of those uh, seg SNP segregating in that manner in this population. And then lastly, you know, a nullplex by triplex is really like a, a, a nullplex by simplex cross just in the other direction, and we have 38 of those. So that's our, our initial uh, set of markers that we can use for analysis. These other ones are segregating, you know, that we have the duplex by duplex or a duplex by simplex, but we're not going to focus on those yet in the, in the population. And so one of the things we can also do is after we see which SNPs we have is, well, where are these SNPs distributed along the chromosome? And so again, uh, Joe was using the, the jump uh, uh, graphical uh, uh, interface to look at that. And so what we have here is in red the whole uh, pseudomolecule for each of the, the 12 designated chromosomes in the potato. And the, the red marks are the SNPs uh, where the SNPs are mapped on those. In the green, what we have is the premier russet uh, parent, and you can see where the SNPs are. And in the, in the blue, we have the Rio Grande uh, russet parent, and you can see the distribution of the SNPs. So we, in general, we have pretty good coverage across the genome. However, there were some gaps, like here on chromosome 3, and the, uh, also on chromosome 9. And then even within some of the chromosomes, we had some gaps like here on chromosome 12 and also on chromosome 11. So there, um, but this is a nice way to, to visualize how we're, how we're seeing things. And this table here summarizes those numbers for you. And we, we left this in the webinar for people that view it at a different time so they can just have the numbers rather than just the visualization. So uh, I'm not going to focus on this at this, this point. 